Oh man, see, I missed that because that that that's even better because if he, she's writing Murphy Brown and Kramer goes and, and then he's on, on Murphy it. Brown, so and and Jerry's making fun of her. He's like, you can't just write these things. Like you've got to get into the characters, you know, whatever, and their stories and like know their head and get some of the backstory going. Gosh, I'm lost. You remember that episode, Adam? I don't. Yeah, I've yeah. not seen every episode. <laughs> I just love the one where George Costanza and his fiance are like licking the envelopes for their. And that's how she ends up dying. Dying. <laughs> She dies, <laughs> which is not funny, but also it's a joke. And then they like, like they his keep, reaction is. And he keeps saying like, "Well, we were expecting about 100 people." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am not Dave Dawson. Uh, I'm Brooks, and Dave is not with us today. That sounds really bad, but he's Dave's not. at like a <laughs> international CrossFit competition today. Just yeah, catch him on you. Catch him on the YouTube <laughs> the live stream. Goal of his. <laughs> oh. um, no, Dave's out, so I'm I'm hosting, and we'll see how I do. Um, You'll do fantastic. Brooks. We got Adam and Matthew with us. Deeper dive. We go over the. We dive deeper into some aspect of last week's sermon, which last week we didn't. We didn't meet together. We didn't gather together on Christmas Day. We worshipped in our homes, and which I think is really, really, really special. Um, there's been some debate about this online. I don't know if you guys are on involved in the in the online discourse, angry pastors around the country, but judging you know, each other, judging mm-hmm. each other yes. like Christians do best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether or not whether or not churches should meet on Christmas Day or not. We worshipped in our home. We Checked out the Bethel live stream and uh, Dave's message and Adam's little message. No, it wasn't really a message. It was introduction. Introduction, yeah. And the I worship. loved your outro, guys. It was really good. Yeah, it's, it is embarrassing how many takes that took. It took you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyways, here we are talking about... Talking about Christmas. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about the, uh, Christmas Eve, actually, in the, in the text we went over on Christmas Eve. But before we get to that, I've got a question for you guys. Uh, if you could if you could hang out with anyone in history besides Jesus, no no biblical characters. We're going to X out biblical characters. Actually, let's do this. Any modern, <laughs> any living person. Living person? Yeah, living person. Any living person. Yeah, so that, that, that immediately puts out all the biblical characters. So no Jesus, no Paul. Are Jesus actually Jesus is, is living. living. I don't know okay. if you... I don't Dang know if you it. <laughs> he is raised... Cut. And glorified and enthroned Brooks alive. I'm going to leave. <laughs> Brooks, Brooks doesn't believe in the resurrection, apparently. <laughs> He's like, I'm never hosting again. <laughs> we put him up to this. He tries to do everybody a solid, and all we do is shoot him down. Person. Like yeah, just, living, living person. Any person walking on this earth. To give myself a little more time to think, Brooks, who's yours? Uh, I don't. <laughs> you think I ask this question like I know the answer? Uh, yeah, hang out with him. It's very, very broad, very open. Um, you know, I think, I, I think it's like a business leader would be good. Um, cause I'm, I kind of like some business, um, le- leadership stuff. Um, hmm. Tim Keller would be sweet to kind of hang out with that him. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. Or you go the other way. You go to like Putin. Like, could be could you get to know Putin a little mm. bit? That might be kind of that be might interesting. it'd be interesting. interesting. You'd have some stories yeah. from there. Yeah. Or yeah. or spend a day with Ye, artist formerly known as Kanye. Those are some really interesting options, Brooks. I'm trying to give you guys. Yeah, I, I, He's I trying like to help you us. said. Those, yeah, I'm trying to help last you. Two definitely didn't make my top fifty. Um, what about I don't honestly? No. Man. Probably an author of some kind. I don't know who that would be, but so you know, I mean, just because I'm I'm a huge Utah Jazz fan, mm-hmm. um, so you know, I get booed for that everywhere I go, and it only makes me stronger. But part of the reason was just because I loved watching John Stockton oh, growing up yeah. in the '90s. Yeah, and uh, I think it'd be really cool to hang out with him for a day and just uh, with Carl or uh, just. Oh, well, if he could be there too, I was only allowed to pick one. If we could bring the whole '90s team together, have Hornet check and the whole bunch back, I think maybe, maybe you could hang out with them, and maybe you could get invited to yeah. like a reunion party or something. Yeah, and I mean, like just right up the road from us, like I could go down to his house, and mm-hmm. 
when you we go could to tour Gonzaga together or something. I don't know. When you go to the Just gym and this stuff up now, do you wear Stockton shorts? Like in honor of Stockton? Uh, or I, I was told by many people not to. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why like, he could pull that off like and I couldn't. I, uh, Funny though, like I mean, just talk about a segue here. Like I actually mentioned that John Stockton thing in my, in my sermon. Did you? Oh, you really? In Christmas Eve, mm. talking about how like I, I know a lot about the guy, but I don't know him. Yeah. Mm. But like I know all these facts. I've read his autobiography. Like I know all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't think we've ever been in the same room together. <laughs> uh, and certainly he wouldn't know me. And then tying that in with, that's fine with John Stockton. That's not okay with Jesus. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of That's people good. who know about Jesus, maybe even know a lot about him, but it doesn't really matter if you don't actually like know him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's where we were talking about yesterday, yesterday uh, on Christmas Eve mm-hmm. um, was, yeah. Do you know Jesus or do you know about him? And there's a huge difference there. And I, th- I think that difference even kind of goes into our own lives. Like you say, like, man, there's people that we know a lot about, mm-hmm. but we don't know. Um, I'm not gonna let Adam get off the hook on this one, though. Yeah, well, if we're we gonna can, like, we if, can't segue our way out of out of who well, did, who does Adam? I feel like with. Tried, man. you made it a little bit easier <laughs> by making think like less serious, like a, like a sports, like an athlete yeah. or someone in the sports world. Man, I'd love to meet Pete Carroll. Yeah, hmm, yeah, that'd be fun. Pete Carroll, he just he he amuses me. Like his positivity, and like we always laugh at home. We're watching games and it's tense, and he's like smacking that gum, walking up and down the. The sideline, jumping up and grabbing players and hugging them. And like, he's just a, I would love to meet him and see what he's like. I've heard he's, in, in real life, he's the same way. You like almost end. guarantee it wouldn't be dull. Yeah. No, yeah. he's like 71. Yeah. Full, going on, full going, going of on 40. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd love to meet him. My, uh, an acquaintance, uh, I don't even know who this was. They saw Pete Carroll um, at a, uh, Burger drive-in. There, there's these burger drive-ins uh, on the west side. Um, Burgerville or uh, Burger Master? Burger Master oh, drive-in. Dude, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, pretty good. Um, there was one down the street from my university that I where I went to school, and that's where Pete Carroll lived oh. in Kirkland. And it was. Is it down by the water? Yep. We used to go there when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Still there. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's, it's been there forever. Put the food on your window. Yeah. yeah. So it was several days after the. Um, the not the Super Bowl, but the, the the when they lost, I think it was when they lost at the NFC Championship. Anyways, it, it was like that night, like two days after that game or something, mm. or the day after that game, they saw Pete Carroll eating in his car. <laughs> so they're like, "This is weird." He's probably going home, uh, just like everybody else, you know. Just like everybody else, Put man. Your pants on one leg at a time. Yeah, but yeah, here here's what oh, we're talking about that that uh, <laughs> that knowing knowing someone is different than knowing about them. Uh, we can know of a lot about a lot of different people, um, but that's different than knowing them. So let, let's bring that to to Jesus. What's the difference between knowing him and knowing about him? Eternity. <laughs> like it matters. But like, I mean, like, your question, but, but, but knowledge of someone like there's like a relational component, like, like, like with like my example of Stockton, like it's, it's fun to know about people and that's mm-hmm. great. Like have, you have to actually like have a relational clout to what, if I really say like, I know someone, what I mean is I have yeah. a relationship with that person. Mm-hmm. And I think of no other relationship in life would we ever replace information with relationship. Mm-hmm. Right. Except in the theological world where we're like, well, we can know a ton and we don't put a nearly enough stock into like time spent with the person. Yeah. It seems like that to know in the biblical sense has an intimacy level to mm-hmm. it of like it's not a cognitive understanding of anything or God. It's it's an actual participation of life and a give and take with God. I mean, even in the Old Testament, that word know is used for like couples when they're conceiving a child. Like there's this intimacy yeah. between them to know one another. And I think that that has an analogy with God. There's like this intimacy, this connection, this life lived this reciprocal relationship with God that that is truly to know Jesus. It's, it's not just, I learned a couple things about him and I know I'm up here. It's like the heart is connected to him in a way that goes far beyond just our brains. So let me, let me ask you this though, since I've got, got the senior pastor of Bethel right here, right? This is kind of a pastoral thing. So if, if the guy is sitting down in, in your office and his concern is like, do I really know him though? Like, man, that message was convicting or whatever. Like, I want to 
make sure that I, like, what would you say? How, how does someone know that they know Jesus? Yeah, that's a good question. Adam. So if someone's asking, <laughs> do I know him? Like they're, they're questioning if they truly have a saving knowledge of Jesus mm-hmm. or. Yep. Like I know, like they're like, ask me any, ask me any theological question. Boom. I'm, I got you. But like you, you, you rose the question of how do you like, do I know, know him? Mm-hmm. How do I know that? Um, and maybe they think they do, but they're, you know. Well, I want to know. I'd want to know because I've had people ask that question. Or, but, but even outside of like knowing him, like, am I saved? Like, am I counted as one of the ones that that God loves? And it's always interesting to ask the question, like, why? Why they ask that question? Like, what about their life? What about their faith makes them question whether they do or do not know Him? And one answer, which doesn't doesn't satisfy what you're asking, I don't think, is just the fact that you are asking and that you're interested and, and want to know God more deeply shows that there's an interest there and a, a level of love for the Lord that other people wouldn't have when they don't ask and they don't care. So for one, I would just say like the fact that you're asking yeah. the question shows that you have an interest in the Lord. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, there's probably a number of ways to explore that. And I'd want to encourage that person. Like I wouldn't want them to, there's not like a, a certain formula for knowing the Lord but I'd want to know like what, what does faith look like for you? And like, do you, do you bow the knee to Jesus? And do you want to know him more? Are you dying to self each day? Are you picking up your cross? Are you trusting Jesus? I'd ask some of those questions, but we want to encourage them with like our relationship with Jesus is a lifelong growth process and um, like lean into it. Like look, keep your eyes on Jesus. That's, that's what matters. So I don't know. That's not a great answer off the, off the cuff. What would you say? I, no, I agree with all that. Um, I, I think, you know, we could turn over to First John and maybe get some more sure. specifics on that, where, where I would say First John is written largely about the assurance of we can know some factual things about who right. Jesus is, but also like you can know that you are a part of the true body of believers, you right? Love one another. And uh, a lot of that's just born out of love. Like mm-hmm. that's one of his qualifications. Yeah. Are, you, are you growing in love mm-hmm. for God and for, for each other? Mm-hmm. Are you filled with the Spirit? For sure. Like you, you, you but can then they could ask the question, what does that mean? Like, well, I, mean I don't know. I don't, yeah. I, am I filled with the Spirit? Like, I, I think I am. Like, how would you... It's almost the same question, right? Do I know the Lord? Am I filled with the Spirit? Sure. Like, there's some subjective element to that that feels like, I don't know how you quantify... Well, a lot of the things I think are most important in life are things you can't actually, like, really measure. Yeah. And not everything is easy to check box. But, I mean, Spirit, well, like, one question would be like, right, where, well, how about the fruit of the Spirit? Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Are you mm-hmm. growing in love, joy, peace, yeah. patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? Yeah. Well, and that's so the conversations I've had with people, and I've have had this for myself as I look at my own life, is we are usually not great at understanding and seeing the fruit that's being born in us. Mm-hmm. And like the the fruit of our love coming out of the love of Christ. Sometimes we're overly inflated in our views, like, oh yeah, I've got a lot of the fruit in people in our lives. They're like, Yeah, you don't actually. <laughs> but there are many people and probably people listening to this right now that who actually are bearing fruit of the spirit and are loving from the love of Christ, and yet they look at their life because the enemy has a foothold, their own insecurities and shame where they're like, there is no fruit in my life. I look around and I'm, my life just looks like it's really vanilla and it's not really empowered by the spirit. And when their life is like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Like I've seen you grow. So I find that that, that complicates that conversation because I, like, I want to navigate pastorally where that person is. Because if someone's really a weak conscience and insecure and struggling, and then you start to put commands on them, like, well, are you loving people? It, it can throw mm-hmm. them for a tailspin. And so trying to find out exactly how to ask the right questions and also affirm. It's, it's, like, it's, just a, it's a dance to do that with. It just depends on who it is. Well, that's why I usually like to use the term, like, are, are, are you growing in that? Mm-hmm. Are you growing sure. in love, joy, peace, patience? Like, yeah. And, and remind you, you don't have to be a master of any of those because right. I know that you're not and I know that I'm not. But like – if, if you know Jesus, like you start to become more like him. Yeah. Like that's what the Bible tells yep. us. And if, if there's no growth, then that, that, that is a red flag. Like mm-hmm. that should be super concerning. So yeah. I read this pastor a while ago that um, he's, he was looking at his life and he said, Mandy, I, I am um, sinning less as I, go, as I grow older, but I'm not sure if it is this is a part part of a larger piece. He said, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's because I'm necessarily being sanctified, sanctified or if it's just because I'm getting lazy. Meaning like some of these actions that I, mm-hmm. I, I would do, um, 
I'm just have have grown tired of in my life, and, and <laughs> so I was like, ah, yeah. he's got the energy to sin anymore. <laughs> yeah, and and it's kind of an interesting. Like, I, I, yeah. do you have? Is there a tra- <laughs> is there a trajectory in life where it's like, yeah, people generally get better. Like, you generally get nicer. You generally stop I, stealing. You generally stop, uh, stop illegally downloading music. Um, so that's I love one of the old prayers of like. No one knows what illegally downloading music is because we all. That was a savvy like old school <laughs> yeah. reference, man. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> Nap, Napster, Napster. And Limewire. Oh, There's yeah. that old prayer that's been used in liturgical churches for years. Like, Lord, forgive us for my sins, that both that I've done mm-hmm. and what I failed to do, and my sins and my thoughts, words and my deeds. To me, like, I'll get to your question about trajectory. But when you can like bifurcate sin to actions then sure, like there are certain points in your life where like, yeah, I don't do those things anymore because I'm lazy or I've, I've experienced some sanctification. I have some self-control. I know the consequences and I want to avoid them. Right, yeah, like I'm, I'm more aware of my consequences, mm-hmm. yeah. I think that they just probably shift to different sins. But like what goes on here and even in our mouth, but especially in our minds, like I would be really cautious with someone that says, oh yeah, like I sin less than I used to. Mm-hmm. Not be, I think God does that, and I think our life should be sanctification. We should be coming more like Jesus. Um, but at the same time, the more we know Jesus, I think as the light shines in our life, we should see more places where we're sinning and we're turning to him and repenting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've used this before. Like my grandpa, this has always stuck with me. I was probably 19, and I was asking him about pastoral advice, and he's like, the older I get, um, the more sinful I realize I am. Yes. And he was like a pious spiritual disciplines, almost like he wasn't in that Methodist movement, but kind of had like this holiness, like arrival yeah. mentality. And he still was like, it's not that I'm actually sinning more per se. I just understand the gravity yeah. of my sin more. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some, there's a lot of truth in that. And so, man, I mean, there's a ton of truth to that. I, I mean, like, I think one of the best things that came out of the holiness movement is the understanding of what holiness is yeah. and that it's right here. Mm-hmm. That what we tend to make holiness is is my actions. For sure. Well, I'm sitting a little less. That, that doesn't mean anything right. unless it comes from the heart. Like right. holiness is my heart is being transformed. For sure, yeah. Uh, because Jesus gave me a new one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like that is actually holiness. Yep. And then the actions do change. They stem out of that. So an answer, yes, there should be a trajectory. But you got to be careful. Just like the thing with knowing Jesus, you can do things that look really holy, mm-hmm. but they're, act- they're actually not. So knowing Jesus, uh, we talked it, uh, from, from hearing you guys right. It's it's the fruit it, like the actions that, that that play out into your life. You would measure them, Matthew, by uh, are you growing in the fruits of the spirit? Are you more patient today than you were a few years ago? Are you more joyful today than you were a few years ago? Um, do you have more self control today than you did a few years ago? Um, how w- what can we do in our in our lives to begin to know Jesus more. Like I'm, I'm speaking practically, yeah. what practical um, practices can we put in our lives? Commune with them. I mean, that's the, we're talking a lot about the fruit that happens when you know Jesus, but to truly know him, to be a disciple and follow after him, like you are, you are moving toward him and communing with him in like, you're actually creating space in your life to engage him through prayer, through his word, uh, through his people, but you're communing with the, like we talked about earlier, right? The living Jesus. Like he's not, he's not a, an idea. He's not like an inert thing. He's God and he's alive and he lives mm-hmm. in you by the spirit. And so actually engaging him then transforms everything else. Like that's mm-hmm. the passage in Paul, like for Philippians three, as soon as Paul knows the value of Jesus, like it transforms everything else because he is so in love with who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for him. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I would say baseline, like communing with him. And there's so many ways to do that, okay. but it's actually like, yeah, I'm going to push, I'm going to push you in that there. Yeah. Like, w- give me more. Okay. Cause that is uh, uh commune with God. Sounds so, so awesome. Okay. Like, well, pra- like, practically. Like, yeah. Well, like, so I commune with my phone every day, which I'm pulling it out. I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm focusing on it rather than focusing on other things. And I'm, it's generally mindless. I'm just browsing. Like I'm, I'm actually like, connecting with this thing and things through it. I'm, I'm communing with my TV screen. I'm communing with well, my own thoughts in my mind. So like at a basic level, it's saying like, I'm going to undistract my life for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to, I'm going to enter into the presence of Christ who's here with me. 
and I'm going to be distracted when I do it and it's going to be a fight to stay focused, but I'm actually going to tune myself in with Jesus and I'm going to pray and, and ask him to like, to be present and to speak. I'm, I'm going to open up his word. I'm going to read it mm-hmm. and I'm going to, I'm going to connect with him and basically open my heart for him to work and to speak and to, to move. But it's not, I mean, it's, it's difficult, right? We are fleshly beings. And so yeah. it's a struggle every time you want to commune with Christ. If you're looking for something like tangible and like, I want it to feel like this, like it's, you got to be patient and, and trust that Jesus is doing something spiritual through it. But instead of picking up my phone, man, I'm giving my time mm-hmm. to Jesus at Bethel. We talk about 1% life, like at a minimum, if you can find 15 minutes a day to unplug and to tune into Christ, like, man, that's a great start. Yeah. And I think you got more to add to that. I, I, uh, I agree with all that. It's not, sometimes I think we make things more complicated than they need to be. Mm-hmm. If I want to grow my relationship with anybody, what do I do? I spend time with them. That's yeah, not yeah. rocket science. Like, but so we do what you're doing, right? Like, uh, if, if you're not a theological person, the word communion, commune with someone sounds weird, but like, just be, be with Jesus, right. like just spend time with them. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, in evangelical world, we usually call it a devotional time or a quiet time. Uh, I usually call them private times of worship because mm-hmm. I feel like it better capsulates what is not always quiet. And, uh, I guess it is time devoted, but that sounds a little, but what do I do with that time? I'm worshiping in it. It's yeah. just, it's the same as I would worship anywhere else, but now it's just me and the Lord. Mm. And that includes all those things. So usually I start off with some praise and some thanks. And I, I try to reflect on something like, what's something I can thank God that I didn't think of yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm always trying to add new things to it. Uh, and then some time of real repentance, not just breezing past that, but like, mm. I, 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 and even that heart of that prayer, like I know there's things I'm not even thinking of. So trying to spend right. some time doing that. Then opening up the word, which is one of the primary ways that God speaks to us. And then also being quiet at the end of that and yep. let him speak through his spirit as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then at the very end, bringing like whatever I've got, whatever burdens and things mm-hmm. to take to the Lord. But all the spiritual disciplines, right? Fasting, all of that stuff. Like those are ways that we grow in that relationship. And even being together in community would be yeah. a part of that, I would add too. Yeah, there's just things that like open us up to the transforming work of God. They're not like, you're not like twisting God's arm, but you're putting yourself in a posture to receive mm-hmm. from him. Yeah, I think all of those things are essential to that even like yeah the corporate gathering when we do that in small groups and at church and like all of those are transformative and yeah. ways that we connect with him so i i am going to steal this <clears throat> quote or data from someone else that i so it's not not i don't have the original source so this might be wrong but it sounds right wikipedia yeah no i don't know it, it, but it sounds right and and, and it's powerful so i'm going to say it um that the thing that most shapes our mind in our cognitive development is the first thing that we think about when we wake up and the last mm-hmm. thing that we think about when we go to go to bed or the first thing that we focus on when we wake up and the, and the last thing we focus on when we go to bed, man, I've been thinking about that it just even for my own life, because I, I think that uh, what we're talking about is knowing Jesus, how that transforms our actual day to day actions, our mm-hmm. life, our thought life, um, these fr- fruits of the spirit, like you're like you're saying, these are the outpourings. These are the mm-hmm. the results of this relationship that we know. Um, and if if that data is true, yeah. that the th- that what what f- shapes our minds and our cognitive uh, 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 thinking is the first thing that we focus on when we wake up, which for me honestly is Twitter. It's like okay, yeah. or or email or whatever whatever email that was sent to me when my phone went on went on do not disturb. It's going to be up there right when I open my phone or I like the stock market. So it's like the stock market and like yeah. doing this or this new, like it, it almost is anything but spending time with mm. Jesus. Like that, that's, that doesn't happen until a little bit later. And then for, for most people, this isn't always me, but for most people, uh, what's the last thing we focus on before we go to bed is probably Twitter. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah. Yeah. That actually is probably is, is, uh, is, is Twitter for me again, but is some, uh, kind of lurid uh, show on mm. ne- Netflix or Hulu or whatever we're watching on that probably would have been considered like, too extreme for TV not 20 years ago, you know? Uh, and that's probably one of some of the last things that we focus on before we go. To, and if though if that data yeah. is true, that this is really shaping our cognitive development, mm. um, it, that, that it, two things stick out to me. One, we need to change our practices. And two, 
man, the Holy Spirit really is powerful <laughs> because in, in, in spite of that, we still have believers that are growing in there, yeah. um, in, in the fruits of their spirit. Uh, I think that the devil has, has done a marvelous job of cluttering and, um, uh, cluttering our lives with distraction mm-hmm. and just things that take our attention. Yeah. The, what you said, what you stuck out, what stuck out to me the most is what you said, Adam is, and just spending intentional time in prayer and the word. And, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a battle at times. Yeah. It's going to be, you're going to be distracted, but that's how you get to know someone. Right. Yeah. And, and doing things with them, not just like, like in our minds, mm-hmm. but like, have you guys read the book? You are what you love by James K. Smith. Oh my goodness. You should read it. Like our listeners. Should I'll, read that I'll, book. I'll add it to the list of the like 10 other books you've told me to read so <laughs> just today. Really? I mean, it's, it's, it's cause Adam reads a book like every five minutes. That is not true. Every it's, not five a, minutes. it's not an original thought from him. Really like, thick ones too. Yeah. yeah. Dense ones. <laughs> the idea is, and he's stealing this from all over the place, but now that I've read him, I hear him in all the places, especially when you're talking about the spiritual life. And oh, wow. And his, mm-hmm. his, his thesis is that we, um, like you are what you love. The thing that you view as the good life in his mind, like what we should view as the, as the good life is the kingdom. Like we should be running towards that and we will if like we're, if our hearts aim towards that. But oftentimes our, like the good life is something else yeah. and like our lives follow after that. But he said like the way that we get our loves is by our habits. So it's not just our minds that we're like, I want to know Jesus more and so I'm going to think about Jesus more. Um, that can do a little bit, but we're not just brains on a stick. We're like embodied beings. And so it's actually your habits and your posture and your life habiting towards that, that then shifts the good life. Does that make sense? Like, mm-hmm. and so for him, he's like, it's, it's a case for some spiritual rhythms. Like we've been talking about like prayer and reading in the scriptures. I think you got like fasting, like you were saying, um, even just finding times in our day, some, some different traditions call them like fixed hour prayer where you're like intentionally mm-hmm. setting a tar- aside like three day- times a day where you're praying and you're habiting your life in a way that's both mind and body so that over time, like you're, you're habituating a love for the kingdom and Jesus. And so it, I think you need both like the mindset, but also like habits and rhythms and like a path that we're literally walking on each day that forms our heart and, and then re-aims it in the right direction. Hmm. And so wow. for him, he's like, you have to dehabituate all the different rhythms you do. Like not that you can't watch shows anymore, but like looking at your day, what are the things that you're using your time, your thoughts, like just everything, even your body throughout the day. And how do you redo those and rehabituate in a way that's life giving. And so if you're thinking about Jesus, like forming and shaping your day in a way that is aimed towards him, whether you're working a secular job or you're working a job in a church, like the struggles very, it's very similar, mm-hmm. like being intentional. Like that's how you can, like, I think set yourself up for like a deeper communion, but it takes work. And as I say that, like I've read all that and it's in my mind, yeah. I'm still figuring out how to do that like in my life. But um, there are many Christians who have lived long before us who have walked the path, the ancient paths of like knowing Jesus and communing with him that we need to recover. I think that's more than just thinking about Jesus. Yeah. Sorry, that was no it's, man. It's that's an amazing, fantastic, it's an incredible book. <laughs> Wait, say the say the title. You are again. what you love by James K. Smith. James K. Smith. Yeah, I've got a couple copies in the office. I'll give it to okay. you. Okay, Jason had a big stack of them that he left there. You know. That's not the pyramid one, is it? Mm. The, with the what's it? Um, no, it's got a heart on it. Okay. He, he, yeah, Jason had another one that he. Like, the J- wisdom Jason, pyramid. That wisdom pyramid. pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jason's crying out from, from his, he's not even with us and he's still speaking. I know. <laughs> so <laughs> what a great leader. Well, Hey, uh, thanks for joining, joining, uh, the deeper dive today, guys. Great conversation. Um, uh, this is Bethel church. We are a production of Bethel church. If you want to know more about Bethel church, go on to our website, Bethel.ch. If you want to, um, we encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel. That helps us. It helps you. Um, we're taking time off in the next couple weeks. So, uh, just to celebrate holidays and, and stuff. We'll be back back better than ever with a deeper dive on January 16th. So, yeah. We'll see you guys.